All right, uh, I got a quick video here for uh, Cisco Stu from the AGR Discord. He was asking how you do Sprint using AGR, which, I mean, really won't be much different than anything else in my opinion. I, I use gas normally for it, so I will manage the state management, which I'll show in a second, through gas. Uh, partly, you know, that would be the message to it. So what we're gonna do right off the start is right click, go to blueprints, create a blueprint interface, name it whatever you want. Mine's called BPI Anim Interface, blueprint interface. Open this up, create a function. You can just do whatever, call it sprint. Um, after you call it sprint, make a input and then do is sprinting for the Boolean. And then you can save, compile and save that. And then that thing is a, that exists, you go to your animation blueprint, um, go up to class settings up at the top, and then you'll wanna add the interface over here on the left hand side or on the right hand side, sorry. Um, that will give you the interface event, which will pop up here under interfaces, and then you can just double click or right click, I believe, and then maybe there should be something there that says create event. Anyway, um, once you do that, you can just create a Boolean from that that is sprinting, um, and you'll need this for in your state machine. So there, again, you can use other ways of communicating this, this method. Uh, personally, what I do with my normal, um, workflow is I'll have gas, like I'll be using gas, and then I'll have property map mapping, which you've probably seen in the Lyra um, example, and I'll use gameplay abilities to activate the property mapping, which will activate the Boolean, which will be inside of my graph. So um, inside of here, this is just a super simple state machine I've built just for this example. It's just got an idle. Um, my blend logic is always, always using inertialization, and then it goes to the sprint right here, which I could change the values of that if I felt, which I'm going to. Um, and then the inside the transitional rules, it's just is sprinting, is not sprinting. Um, inside the state machine is just the the, the sprint itself. Um, I'm adding orientation and bank warping because they look great and it allows you to do uh, a little bit more 45 degree sprinting, which I feel like is, is good. Um, and then I'll show you how to limit that here in a second as well. And then the bank warping just adds some lean. You can use the in-engine uh, warping as well, like under skeletal controls here. However, this one is a component pose. And because you don't wanna have component poses in sequence in your, in your event graph, if you can avoid it, cause it's uh, not good for performance, um, it's better if you can leave these at the end of your graph. So there's usually a way like an alpha of turning this on or off. Um, and you can use that warping alpha along with something like is sprinting to only turn on orientation warping when you are sprinting or when you are running or when your velocity is over a certain value or something along those lines so that it can be active like at the end of your graph as opposed to in the middle of my graph like I have it here. Cause if you don't have these fast paths, you can end up with some problems. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the basic rundown of, of what I got going on here. Uh, it just goes on into, like I said, the sequence. Um, and then in the player itself, this is where the control happens. Uh, I set up an enhanced input. You can use normal input as well. Um, I mean, really at the end of the day, pressed is essentially triggered when you have it set up as a Boolean and released is going to be completed. So, um, Whenever it's triggered, sets is sprinting through the blueprint interface. And this is just a message. If you bring up sprint, it'll have a message. And this will get sent to whatever its target is, which you want it to be the anim instance of the mesh that you have. Because that's the that's who's going to have this interface. Because um, you put it on there, right? Um, so after that, then this is where the, seats, the speed setting is, where normally you would do this through an RPC if you were going to do it replicated. I'm not doing an example on replicated sprinting right now because it's I'm just not into it. But uh, essentially, you just do Google this. You'll find other tutorials on replicating sprint or doing sprint through RPCs. That's how you would do it. Just 350 or 500, 350 is my my movement settings. I'll share my character movement settings right here. Um, this is how I'm getting really smooth rates right now. You can play around with these settings and whatever, but the default acceleration is like four times this amount. Um, you know, they, there, there's just a lot of things that makes it then animation feels very quick and responsive, but also a little bit choppy. So, um, feel free to look through that, pause the screen if you need, do whatever. Uh, and then up here, 
the final part of this whole puzzle, and most people don't have this part, is like I have off of move, I have this movement vector, which I mean, you can just break off of here too. It's the same thing. Um, it has an X and a Y. Your values of X and Y might be different if, because of enhanced input and the way that swizzle works. Uh, it's weird. Um, but basically X and Y are your forward and right. And off of your right, this is where you want to have this whole function coming. So technically all my inputs are running right here. Move right, move right, move left, whatever, move forward. Uh, and as it gets to here, it checks to see if I'm not falling. And if I'm not falling, then it's going to do this thing. Um, I don't remember why I had this check specifically, but it was on my previous project. So I just copied it over. But the main thing is that if your right is greater than 0.5, then, um, how's that working? Yeah, if your right is greater than 0.5, then don't do anything. If it's less than 0.5, then cancel sprint. Um, or maybe that's forward. I don't remember. I'm tired. <laughs> anyway, you basically want it to cancel because of my orientation warping, it'll become more obvious. But if I'm running forward, I can run at a 45 degree angle and it's fine. As soon as I run completely right or completely left, it disables sprint because it's technically ticking off of my input saying if my input is going and I believe this is forward, to be honest, if my forward is less than 0.5, then cancel sprint and set the speed back to normal. And it just makes it so that, yeah, like I said, you can sprint forward, you can sprint at 45, so it feels nice and natural and it looks great with the orientation warping. Um, but if I try to sprint at a direct 90 degree strafing wise, it's not gonna work. Um, that's just how I have it set up. If you wanna sprint in all directions, go hard. Um, this is only also going to affect something if, like if I set this to rotate to velocity, it should allow me to sprint in all directions. Yeah, I just have to be holding forward and that's gonna, that'll do it no matter what. As soon as you start, like I said, pressing those other directions, it's gonna go down, so. Um, yeah, that should be a basic rundown. Like I said, this is coming off. This is essentially a cancellation thing. Normally I would do this with a send gameplay event to actor to cancel sprint. Um, this is the sprint. You can synchronize um, motion in different ways or your, your movement speed in different ways. You don't have to use an RPC, but that's, probably the most recommended way because it's pretty much just to send one and then cancel another message so it's not like a bunch of messages. Um, you want to build the blueprint interface and add that. Yeah, that should be everything. So any, any, any questions, I mean, feel free to ask at the bottom. Like I said, there's other implementations and better ways of doing this, but this is a way and it works pretty good. And I mean, results speak for themselves. If I start sprinting, and then I speed up and I speed down. It doesn't, I'm not getting any weird issues and I'm just gonna completely let go of my input and it blends out nice and perfect. So um, yeah, I hope, uh, hope you learned something. Thanks.